Today we'll be discussing multiparametric MRI imaging and fusion biopsy in men with a prior negative prostate biopsy. My name is Dr. Art Rastenhan, and I will be one taking you through this section of the course. Before we begin, we always have some disclaimers. This course is for educational purposes only. It allows our physicians to review the material after attending one of our hands-on courses. It is not to be used to direct patient care or a substitute for actual hands-on training. The current approach using PSA and transrectal ultrasound-guided biopsies to screen men for prostate cancer was developed in the 1980s, and nothing has really changed since then, except for what we're discussing today, using imaging to hopefully improve the way we screen men for prostate cancer. There's approximately 1 million prostate biopsies done per year in the United States. And if you're a man with a PSA higher than four, and this is your first biopsy, the chances of that bi biopsy being positive is only 30 to 40%. It doesn't mean that you don't have prostate cancer if it's negative, it just means no cancer was detected. Did you know that the standard ultrasound guided prostate biopsy only samples 0.4% of the prostate? And prostate cancer is the only solid tumor that is routinely detected by indirect tissue sampling, which means the random biopsy with no specific direction for targeting an area of the prostate that may be at higher risk for having prostate cancer. Reviewing the limitations associated with PSA-based screen in conjunction with the transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy for prostate cancer is reported here. If your PSA is greater than 4, the sensitivity is 20.5% and the specificity is 93.8. With all screening tests, the goal is to optimize the sensitivity and the specificity. If you decrease the PSA threshold to 3, so you're biopsying more men, you're going to improve the sensitivity because you're capturing more men with prostate cancer. As we know, there's approximately 25% of men will have prostate cancer with a PSA of less than 4. Well, if you optimize your sensitivity, you can kind of sacrifice your specificity as you see the decrease in specificity here. A lot of investigators believe that the optimal sensitivity and specificity obtained by multiparametric MRI imaging may help this and improve the way we screen and stratify risk for men with prostate cancer. If you're one of those men that had an elevated PSA, had your first biopsy was negative, do you know how many men go on to have a repeat biopsy? Approximately 50%. But of that 50% for their second, third, and fourth biopsy, it's almost a law of diminishing returns. On that second biopsy, only 18% will have a positive biopsy if the same transrectal ultrasound guided approach is used. Notice that if you had more than three biopsies, the cancer detection rate is less than 10%. We have to be able to do something better for our patients. Why does this occur? Well, I think it has a lot to do with sampling and targeting. Dr. Emberton and the group from UCL wanted to answer this question. They used whole mount histopathology and did computer modeling to determine how well a transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy performs in the most optimal fashion with regards to detecting lesions greater than 0.5 cc's and lesions 0.2 to 0.5 cc's, and also compared this to transperineal mapping biopsies. If you look at a 0.5 cc lesion, which is one centimeter in diameter essentially, can be missed almost 50% of the time. And a transperineal mapping biopsy doesn't miss those big lesions because they're sampling every five millimeters, so you're not going to miss that large lesion. But it's important to understand that a 12 core biopsy performed in the most optimal fashion can miss a lesion seven millimeters to a centimeter almost 80% of the time. So I think it's just emphasized and reinforces the idea that there's a real limitation with targeting and a sampling bias associated with a 12 core biopsy. So what are the options? Well, people try to stratify a patient's risk for having prostate cancer using nomograms, or people use different forms of PSA, or even novel markers as listed here. What all these have in common is the fact that none of these use targeting in order to improve and sample the most suspicious areas within the prostate. Of the prior reported possible approaches used in the previous slide, notice the area on the curves are all limited. Why is this? I think it really has to do with still sampling air. If you, be if you sampled better to more suspicious areas, this would increase the area on the curve for all of these tests. Historically, as we talked about, prostate cancer is composed of screening, biopsy in men, and then diagnosing them with prostate cancer. 
using MRI as an intermediary step between an elevated PSA and a prostate biopsy may become a useful tool. A systematic review revealed that 38% of men with a prior negative biopsy had a negative MRI, and cancer in this group was only 23%. And of that 23%, only 2.3% actually had clinically significant disease. Our series, we had approximately 54% had a negative MRI, and we found cancer in 18%, and less than 5% harbored clinically significant disease. While these studies are limited, however, it does lay the foundation for a possible future using MRI as a screening tool before biopsy, and then obviating the need for a biopsy in the future. Multiparametric MRI may hold the key to the future of screening men for prostate cancer. As the technology improves with image quality as well as cost and time, it's becoming a more ubiquitous tool to evaluate men with an elevated PSA, especially in men with a prior negative prostate biopsy. There is some debate, should one use an endorectal coil or not? There is some cost associated with an endorectal coil MRI because the endorectal coil is disposable. However, when trying to evaluate the usefulness and the performance of a multiparametric MRI, it has been shown in this matched group of 20 patients who underwent an endorectal coil MRI and one without, that the sensitivity increased up to 76% from 45%, and the positive predictive value increased 26% up to 80% when using an endorectal coil MRI with fluorinert instilled within the coil. It was also shown that it did detect smaller lesions as well. Currently, men presenting with a persistently elevated PSA to the urologist's office after a prior biopsy are presented with two options. Should they undergo a repeat 12-core biopsy, which we know the cancer detection goes down each time you repeat that test, or an MRI of the prostate. Most men are choosing to have some type of imaging prior to repeating the 12-core biopsy. Once the imaging is complete, there are different approaches and different tools people can use to take the information from the MRI to perform a biopsy. In gantry biopsies, which are inside the magnet where you're able to target, has been shown to be costly due to time and you're unable to use the magnet for other tasks while you're performing a biopsy. A cognitive biopsy where you use the information in the MRI to kind of generalize the location to sample using an ultrasound guided biopsy approach. Or template mapping biopsies where you take multiple cores using a brachy stepper grid, which has some morbidity associated with it. Or a fusion guided biopsy. I'll be discussing MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsies in the following slides. Well, looking at the cancer detection rates of these different approaches, if you repeat the 12 core biopsy, the cancer detection is about 18%. You perform a saturation biopsy in a patient with prior negative prostate biopsy, it increases up to 30%. And a transperineal biopsy has a similar cancer detection rate up to 37%. Looking at large series of MRI guided in gantry biopsies, the cancer detection rate is about 41%. Comparing our cancer detection rates in MRIs and transperineal mapping biopsies and transrectal ultrasound guided fusion biopsies, the performances are about the same. Transperineal mapping biopsies are pretty much the gold standard compared to whole mount histopathology when assessing the performance of these machines. Looking at the traditional biopsy approach, this is a gentleman with two prior negative prostate biopsies. He presented and underwent a multiparametric MRI of the prostate. As you know, the limitations of the 12 core biopsy where the laterally directed cores to optimize sampling through the peripheral zone where 70% where of prostate cancer is located is our optimal way it's done today. However, if you look at the relationship to the urethra and the tumor, most likely the cores are directed laterally away from this. That's why this area was under sampled during initial evaluations. Fusion biopsy technology. Well, it's accomplished by different approaches. Some vendors use mechanical localization, which is like a robotic arm that keeps track of where the ultrasound is in 3D space. Others use EM tracking, which is like a satellite over the ultrasound probe to see where it is within relationship to the patient and the images obtained, and optical tracking, which has sensors on the probe itself to keep track where it is in 3D space. Other vendors use a retrospective or computer-aided fusion where it takes a picture and then within a few seconds matches that to the ultrasound and the MRI together. So it doesn't use any external tracking, it's using computers to map to the specific area.
This is a simplified example of fusion. The ultrasound is overlaid with the MRI. Each vendor accomplishes this in a slightly different way, but it combines the benefits of the MRI's high sensitivity and specificity for detecting prostate cancer and the ultrasound's ability to do real-time imaging in the office in an inexpensive fashion. This technology allows us to guide, track, and record biopsies in 3D space. So what's the future? Well, these fusing technologies can fuse multiple imaging modalities, so you can do nuclear medicine studies and fuse that information with the MRI, then to the ultrasound and target it. And then you can develop genomic profiles, use special targeting agents to evaluate by imaging technologies, and then sample those to develop radiogenomics and different types of atlases for the evaluation of men at risk for prostate cancer or even with prostate cancer. This is an example of an MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy using the Euronav device. The top screen is our live ultrasound. The bottom screen is a previously obtained MRI with a target marked. See the green olive on the top of the screen? This is a suspicious area. We're able to place the needle, which is coming in, up to the level of the mass or the suspicious lesion, and then a sample is taken. Notice how the MRI outline matches directly with the ultrasound outline of the prostate. We're able to record the biopsy location and save this for later to compare it to the MRI as well as correlate it with the pathology. We obtain one biopsy in the axial plane and one biopsy in the sagittal plane. When learning, you probably can take extra samples to increase your or decrease the possibility of missing the lesion. Here you see me rotating the probe from the axial to the sagittal planes to confirm adequate fusion. See the hypoechoic area that somewhat correlates with the MRI ultrasound lesion? We then place the needle again approximately two centimeters into the prostate before sampling the suspicious lesion. The needle enters, it's pulled back right below the suspicious area, and a biopsy is taken. and then we record the biopsy findings for later. Looking at the cancer detection in patients with prior negative biopsies can vary from institution to institution. Sometimes the reps will say their product is better than the others. I want you to understand that this is not the case. If you look at the rate or the number of MRIs that are called positive at each of these institutions, then control for that. The cancer detection is the same amongst all these institutions. These institutions are centers of excellence. They have high quality MRI, high quality radiologists interpreting that, and then urologists with years of experience performing targeted biopsies. This just reinforces the fact that your quality of your MR imaging plays a major role in the outcomes of your targeted biopsy. Using our series, we sought to evaluate the performance of an MRI ultrasound fusion guided protocol biopsy predicting cancer in men with a prior negative biopsy and compared to this to PSA density and PSA in our series. I show you the previous numbers, the area on the curve that was presented earlier, and then ones directly from our series the area on the curve for an MRI and a protocol fusion biopsy outperformed the PSA and PSA density. The cancer detection rate in our trial was 65% versus the published trials of 10 to 32% using these other approaches. Again, these other approaches do not account for targeting. They are used to try to stratify a patient's risk, but doesn't tell the urologist where to biopsy. Most recently, the National Institutes of Health and Care Excellence in the United Kingdom performed an evaluation of the clinical impact and cost of using PCA3, the Phi score, multiparametric MRI, and patients with prior negative biopsies. They found no benefit when PCA3 or the Phi score was used when compared to multiparametric MRI in these patients. The cost of offset by the decrease in biopsies is where MRI was found to be advantageous. In their clinical guidelines, they recommend that if your MRI is negative after a prior negative prostate biopsy, do not have a prostate biopsy and continue to be followed. The current status of MR ultrasound fusion guided biopsy is ever evolving. It's an office-based platform that's agnostic, which means it's compatible with most 
ultrasounds that urologists have in their offices. The interpretation of the MRIMG is done by the radiologist prior to the biopsy. It segments and targets automatically. It's based on ultrasound technology, which urologists are very familiar with, and only requires a minimal understanding of MRI imaging, which we've reviewed in the other courses. It's important that you're able to view the MRI, understand where the target is, and correlate that with the ultrasound. This list of MRI ultrasound fusion biopsy vendors is not meant to be conclusive. However, it does give you an idea how many different vendors there are out there to choose from. So when choosing a system, it's important to evaluate them all thoroughly to make the best decision that works for you and your practice. In conclusion, we believe imaging overcomes the sampling error associated with standard 12 core biopsy. In patients with a prior negative prostate biopsy, our evaluation of 141 patients with a positive MRI, 65% harbored prostate cancer. 70% of the people positive for biopsy harbored clinically significant disease. And the question is always asked, if you only use a targeted biopsy approach, would you miss any clinically significant disease? The answer is yes, you will miss some. The question is, what is your threshold? If patients with a suspicion of four or five on multiparametric MRI was used as a threshold, only 3.5% of patients with least in seven disease or greater would have been missed. In summary, the MR ultrasound fusion technology uses the key information from the MRI to target cancer. Looking at multiple publications comparing the standard 12 core biopsy in the same type of patients, there's a three times increase in cancer detection rate. This repeating a 12 core biopsy, as you know, has a cancer detection rate of only 10 to 22%, compared to 37 to 65% for fusion biopsies. In the end, this really equates to no more blind biopsies. I know it's a colloquial term, but it's a really way to emphasize the limitations associated with standard 12 core biopsy. The take home point, I always say this in all of my talks, garbage in equals garbage out. If you have poor imaging, poor interpretation, or have difficulty understanding what has been reported on the multiparametric MRI of the prostate, you're gonna get poor results. It's important to have pathology review. You, the pathologist, the radiologist, should get together on a regular basis to review the findings and tailor your techniques at multiple different levels. This can improve the MRI interpretation and results for your patients. I'd like to say thank you for taking the time to review this session of the course. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to continue to find updates and new course material. For additional material, please visit our website at interventionalurology.com. If you have any questions, please tweet at me at Dr. Rastenhead hashtag, and any comments, please hashtag MRFusion. Thank you so much for your time, and please stay tuned for more updates.